I'm Tony, this is Long Story Short, and one of the most striking things about living on your own for the first time is coming face to face with just how much garbage you produce. I was recently reminded of this when I made the switch to reusable coffee pods and watched as my weekly trash pile got noticeably smaller. To be honest, I made that change because it was cheaper. Whether I toss out an extra bag full of little plastic cups each week makes little difference in my life. But should it? We have many systems built to hide our trash from us so that essentially no matter how much we produce, we don't have to see it if we don't want to. Unfortunately, that means most of us, myself included, don't think about it if we don't want to. And that's bad news because if we thought about it more, we may act differently. So let's take a closer look. What happens when billions of people don't have to see or think about their trash? This is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, represented on a map. You may have heard of this before. It's not a new problem, but it is a big one. Much of the garbage we don't think about ultimately finds its way into the ocean. Entire swaths of the deep blue sea are now becoming murky soups of worn down garbage. In some spots, you can expect to find a little under 2 million pieces of debris for every square mile of water. As this waste floats to the surface or sinks beneath the waves, it wreaks havoc on the environment. But we all know it's not just our oceans. If you've been to just about any city on Earth, you know that trash litters the streets and coats the bottoms of our lakes and rivers. 2.6 trillion pounds. Very roughly speaking, that's about the weight of 5,000 skyscrapers. That's also about how much trash we humans produce each year. Every last scrap has got to go somewhere. Where that somewhere is, is a serious issue that serious people are talking about. The World Bank's 2012 Global Review of Solid Waste Management illustrates our attempts at dealing with this. The best efforts try to cut off the problem at its source, waste diversion. Throw out less, reuse more, recycle what you do throw out and find a way to recover or completely break down anything that remains. This tactic is our best bet because it creates a closed loop for most of the waste in our society. If we repurpose our garbage piles, we can keep them from growing forever. Of course, such a system wouldn't be perfect, but that can be okay. Any waste you can't divert can be contained in one spot. You can keep garbage piles and controlled landfills if you take the proper steps to manage things like toxic sludge and gases. We technically can't keep this up forever because we aren't actually doing anything to reduce the pile, but it's totally manageable if the vast majority of waste gets diverted first. And that is why we are seeing trash leak into everything because most of the garbage we produce today goes straight to disposal. When the system focuses on waste disposal, those piles grow very quickly, forever or until we stop. The loop isn't closed. It's like trying to fix a leaking pipe by putting a bucket underneath it. You can make the bucket bigger, even get more buckets, but eventually you'll run out of space, buckets will leak or overflow, the pipe will continue leaking, and everything will degrade as you reach a point of true crisis. And just so you know, our trash buckets are leaking and overflowing right now. The garbage patch is what that looks like, but we all see evidence of it quite often. Usually it's the amount of money we have that determines how well it's all hidden. And yet the torrent of garbage continues. 2.6 trillion pounds and what should be a closed loop is instead a downward spiral. Something as big and permanent as the ocean is now tainted by the sheer volume of garbage we produce. If this feels normal to you, that's the problem. We've been doing things this way for long enough that we're all used to it. But this definitely isn't normal. If it was, we would have drowned in our own waste ages ago. So let's get unused to it. How did this happen? The short version revolves around human ingenuity and one revolutionary invention. Let's talk humans first. 
We are primates who use tools to invent things. But lately, most of us have a similar goal in mind. We're trying to save time. Many of our most revolutionary inventions have made time-consuming things less time-consuming, at least for the people using them. Find a way to plant and harvest crops in a tenth the time you're used to, and now you can plant and harvest ten times as much food. Find a way to perform math trillions of times faster, and you can use that math to do really funky stuff, like put a moving image on a screen. On a societal level, stuff that saves time is downright seductive. We never have enough time, so we don't want to waste it. But as we've learned many times over our history, we really need to be careful. When we cut corners to save time, we risk introducing side effects or neglecting important steps between us and our goals. We've got a name for these side effects. They're called negative externalities. To give an extreme example, we developed and used nuclear weapons to scare our enemies and end a brutal war as quickly as possible. The side effect is that we now have the technology to truly wipe ourselves out. So how does throwing everything out save us this precious time and what negative externalities threaten us? The answer to both is simple. It's maintenance. Almost everything in life requires maintenance, both our bodies, our relationships, and our dishes. If you're living on your own, you know that someone's got to do the dishes or else they'll just keep piling up. You could just not do them, but then you'll be eating off dirty surfaces and you'll get sick. If you really, really don't want to do them, the only other option is to get new dishes. But then, eventually, you'll have so many old dishes that you'll be living in a pile of dirty dishes. The loop isn't closed. You need to maintain your dishes, otherwise the pile will just keep getting bigger. Of course, there is another option, at least for the individual. If you can find a way to get rid of dishes as quickly as you use them, then you personally get to spend zero time maintaining them. You've cut corners, but the dirty dishes aren't in your face and you've got clean ones to eat off of. But you skipped something. And if you listen to nothing else, listen to this, because this is the part we all allow ourselves to forget. The maintenance didn't happen. You addressed the beginning and end of the problem facing you personally without dealing with all the stuff in the middle. Those dirty dishes don't just disappear. Your problem has just been lumped into some other problem outside your field of view. When three plus billion urbanized people are doing the same thing, that other problem can get really big, really fast. After all, this dangerous disposable mindset only became popular among the general public relatively recently. World War II was ending and we'd just gotten done turning tons and tons of resources into explosions and dead people. As folks returned from the war, people needed jobs, nations needed to rebuild, and a wonder material was needed to help make it all happen. Enter plastic. First synthesized in 1907, it was inexpensive, lightweight, durable, corrosion resistant, and could be made to withstand high temperatures and even electricity. This stuff could be produced extremely cheaply from oil with tools we already had. And with the world economy kicking into high gear after an economically devastating world war, the public was encouraged to use what they needed, throw away the rest, and buy more next time. Plastic excelled where other materials fell short. Wood has to be cut down and carved into shape. Paper yellows and degrades with time. Tin and other metals are useful, but not practical for everything. Plastic, on the other hand, it could be molded and shaped into almost anything used, almost anywhere, and would last functionally forever. Toothpicks, cups, plates, combs, Tupperware. If you couldn't make it with plastic, you could store it with plastic. At the grocery store, you could now grab as much cellophane-wrapped consumer goodness as you could fit in a cart, throw everything in some plastic bags, use the stuff you like, throw out the packaging, buy some more. No more cleaning containers, no more measuring out portions at the store. We all saved that time we would have spent maintaining our things and started producing ever larger piles of trash. We've been doing things this way for the better part of a century now. And, well, that's it. Long story short, society underwent a fundamental change assisted by a miraculous material that made it easy for people to save time on everyday maintenance by throwing everything away. 
Since then, our garbage problem has become so normal and hidden that we hardly even think about it, even though the bigger problem we're each contributing to grows every day. I don't think it's a great leap to assume that many of you watching have bought a bunch of plastic plates and cups just to throw every single one away in a week's time. I know I have. We have to remember that this is new. Things haven't always been this way. All this time we've saved on maintaining our things by throwing them out, that maintenance never happened. That stuff is still out there somewhere. If you can start thinking outside the realm of one life, one lifetime, you can see how this is a big problem. Think about the garbage patch we discussed earlier. The world is finite, shockingly finite. Eventually, the garbage will make it back to us, and we'll wish we would have just done our damn dishes in the first place. Like with anything else, if you don't maintain your home, things break. Whether that's your house or your planet, it still holds true. Saving time by just hiding our trash isn't sustainable, and it never was. That means someday someone will have to deal with whatever we didn't in a more permanent fashion. Almost a hundred years of dirty dishes from billions of people. Next time you throw something out, think of how you'd handle the situation if it weren't disposable. Really question the value of that time you're saving. Some changes aren't realistic for everyone, and I don't expect you all to change your lives in fundamental ways, but if you just don't want to do your dishes, for example, really consider what you're doing. Maybe if everyone starts making little changes, like saving money on reusable coffee pods instead of the plastic ones and making an effort to recycle, we can at least get started closing that toxic loop we've got going on. We've been making a habit of kicking problems down the road to our kids. How about we cut that garbage out? Thank you all for watching as usual. Also as usual, if anything in this video blew your mind, please don't just take my word for it. Go out there and do some more research yourself because that's how you get informed about this stuff. Some important notes, I do make some generalizations in this video. Plastic is not the only thing that drove the uh, whole move towards disposable everything. It was just a big part of it. Similarly, humans don't only invent things to save time. It's just a very, very common purpose. And it's one that drives decisions on an individual level very often. I use the whole uh, dishes and plastic utensils example so much because I feel that is something many people are super duper familiar with. For those of you who've been around a bit and know that my release schedule hasn't been quite what I had said it was going to be earlier, we are going to be moving towards a once a month sort of thing. I've just found that to be able to get the quality around about where I want it and go to school and have a job uh, once a month is what we're looking at. Anywho, I really do mean it when I say that after this video, I hope you put more thought into what you're trading when you save time with technology, especially when it comes to disposable stuff. Uh, really just think about it. Our species is kind of running out of time to not think about things. There's just too many of us. Our technology is too advanced, too dangerous. We can't be mindless. All that said, if you liked this video, please do like it. If you disliked it, you know what to do. But if you really liked it, maybe consider subscribing and coming back for more. Either right now, if you don't mind watching all my old kind of crappy videos, or in a month from now when I'll release another video, if everything goes according to plan. Have a great one, y'all.